Hi, welcome. This is the Daily Dharma. My name is Dina with Empress of Warrior. I've been away sick. I, my deepest apologies if anybody was waiting on any content. So getting right into it today, we've got some cards already laid out and I've already tried doing one recording and decided to scrap that one. So with the sacred Geometry, Activations, Oracle deck, we've got two piles that popped out right away. The empowerment with the fertility at the same time as the first and second chakras, the root chakra and the sacral chakra popped out together. Now, anyone who is already a pro or getting into the chakra systems will know that the the root chakra has a lot to do with power with the ability to thrive it's the literal physicality and it represents our ability to root into this life to the mother and to gain sustenance into the self the ability to thrive is literally held there and the sacral chakra is the reproductive organs um, and the the center of creativity and sensuality and so the two together have a lot to do with the passions and compassions that are developing in our in our world so it's the ability to root to the to the to the life that is and then to use those energies that present themselves in a creative way to make your life something meaningful and relevant in service in some type of a way, right? The ability to take your passions and to create something meaningful is the graceful introduction of compassionate passion, engaging in life and gaining something of meaning out of it. So fertility and empowerment here seems like the creative use of our power to make something more than the sum of its parts. And so with the cards under the deck, we have integration and then we have consciousness and passion were the back two cards here. So and integration gives way to perception, right? So it's using the consciousness, the multidimensional aspects of everything that comes into our awareness to use those to spark something within ourselves, some type of relevance, and then to engage with that to create. So moving into the mixed shamanic decks next, we have the mystical shaman and the shaman's dream oracle together. And these next cards popped out all as one. We had 45, Repairing the Veil, Forgiveness. And then I'm showing the next two together, two people cards here. The Time Master looking straight at the mystical shaman. And I'm noticing with these two cards how busy the crown area is with this time master has just two feathers but all of those schematics and the runes here and the rainbow heavy cloak energy and the this sacral chakra colors coming through in that mass of curls and, and energy all around the head here and then the mystical shaman what strikes me is the simplicity in almost barren, desolate landscape that's shown with them. But also, the mystical shaman is shown expelling some smoke that is becoming this figure here, as well as we're seeing this projected image of a bird. And notice the nose on the mystical shaman is that of a bird. Coming next, we have the eagle. So I'm seeing that the mystical shaman may have a totem animal lifetime energy identification with the energy of the eagle. Um, 
Another thing that's really showing itself to me, uh, I don't know if you've seen Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children, but one of the children in the story is shown with this monocle type of almost telescope, and he puts it there on his eye and is able to project his dreams from the night before out to show a movie to the rest of the children. It's one of his special skills. And so a couple of things. I'm, I'm seeing that this is what is projecting this bubble here with the bird here. It's like the higher self or the oversoul element here that is deeply connected to from this mystical shaman individual. And it's almost like projecting the consciousness from the dreamscape is the accumulated soul essence from many timelines connected to show the material self in this timeline the way forward in a way and it's like the um in the awakening process the over soul or higher self kind of playing with concepts with your soul us uh, symbolic language through your dreamscapes and using these to project the way forward to give you the indications of how to move and there's this there's this idea that this time master is an energy that has persisted in your in your life. And of course, some of you may identify more as the time master than the mystical shaman, but for simplicity's sake, I'm seeing this time master as somebody in the past, a family member, an authority figure of some sort that has seemingly taken part of the essence from from your energy how do i want to say this like someone who who the mystical shaman identifies with being a challenging situation in the past that has maybe cost critical time or has created critical touch points of developing your own inner authority, your own sense of correct boundaries and that type of information here, where then this individual from the past has somehow uh, seemed to hold some type of influence over a certain segment or aspect of the personality or segment of your life, such as the ability to create material abundance instead of just energetic and consciousness abundance. Because I'm seeing the time master as somebody who operates more in the material, who uses their, their creative ability to flow with their true desires in a forward motion and stimulating their creative power to manifest success and abundance in their life. So they've created all this material abundance here on the physical plane and maybe even in their physical body like this person might have created an image a persona a beautiful outer shell or even um, an indulgent pudgy outer shell for some that indulgence can come through versus the um, healthy abundance it can go to extremes right and so I'm sensing that then the mystical shaman here has, has somehow assigned some type of authority to this individual, whether it's a parent figure, um, a teacher, something like that here. Um, this energy might have persisted where the mystical shaman then has witnessed this individual or vice versa. The time master may see this mystical shaman aspect as repeating theme in their life where the mystical shaman on the other end is somebody who's more psychic more priestess high priest seeming and there's um an aspect of the hierophant in the mystical shaman maybe a taurus or someone else 
like even a Pisces or it can be any sign, but somebody who is very spiritually engaged and sees through the veil and works on the other side of the veil very diligently and has worked very hard to create or to release the the mystical shaman is one who works with release proactively or incidentally by just having many endings in life where they have learned the lessons of advancement and graduation through outgrowing previous ways of being previous aspects of self like beginning um shy or uh, misunderstood and then coming through with uh, a great ability to communicate through some medium of maybe creative outlet could be musical artistic writing form or a verbal communication form but the mystical shaman seems to be releasing all of what does it serve and really projecting forward, utilizing their higher aspects here to lead the way here. And so I sense that there's something that the time master energy and the mystical shaman energy are learning from each other. And uh, one or both of these individuals may be yourself and another at this time coming together to learn a new a new uh, level of this skill here. So then we have, um, well, under the deck here, we have lightning. This is the activation, the epiphany moment where you're able to see that you've gotten through the chrysalis phase. There's standstill under this and wild woman under that. So it's an activation of your true soul's destiny coming through with some new skill set enlightening yourself and releasing yourself from the past here. <clears throat> and then we have um, the Chinamasta energy here, talking about grace through severance from the past. So being willing and able to put an end to an old situation, to not re-engage in the same type of a way, even if this energy comes back around, being fresh eyes and fresh energy forward, and to be able to finally graduate from this lesson and to be able to kind of, it's something about your religious upbringing versus the spiritual aspect of becoming here and you're both teaching each other lessons here and yours is through release and theirs is through accumulation and I'm sensing that there's this epiphany moment where you are able to understand their purpose and position in your life and how this has helped you actually to surmount many obstacles in your present tense here so we've got this correspondence coming through a letter or correspondence about some hard work that you've put in in a lucky break here people agreeing to something and possibly being able to travel I don't know if you're planning any travel in the next few weeks or months but it's a, a lucky break, a lucky correspondence, something coming through that you've put a lot of effort and work and uh, time and effort and energy into coming through. And you're really showing yourself strong and illuminated here, rising above the fray. And so you can see that there's these little, little things hung here. Some of those are, one's a clock. And then there's these elements of energy around this monocle here, this little projecting eyepiece here. It's like being able to see your future self through the present tense and understanding what's necessary to moving forward. So <clears throat> for the Tao messages today, 68, the best athlete wants his opponent at his best. The best general enters the mind of his enemy. The best businessman serves the communal good. The best leader follows the will of the people. 
all of them embody the virtue of non-competition. Not that they don't love to compete, but they do so in the spirit of play. In this, they're like children and in harmony with the Tao. So there's something about letting things flow through you, not holding a grudge here, and entering into the mind of the enemy. There's something about this projection into the consciousness of the other individual here, this time master, where I believe that they're stuck in a past situation and your ability to come through and sever yourself from the past is able to release them from some type of cage, where in the past you may have, mystical shaman may have envisioned themselves the innocent bystander caught up in the in the web of this time master the true the truth of the matter is that the mystical shaman holds the key to release the other the time master from their own cage here and the time master is going to be in charge of of unlocking themselves from from their own bitterness 72. When they lose their sense of awe, people turn to religion. When they no longer trust themselves, they begin to depend upon authority. Therefore, the master steps back so that people won't be confused. He teaches without a